My favorite plant to grow in my yard is the fruit tree because you plant it once and you get fruit for decades. If you have ever been curious on the best ways to be successful in growing fruit trees, today is your lucky day. Why? Because my team and I have compiled our best interviews and videos in one place to assist you in growing your own toe-tingling peaches and awesome apples right out your front or back door. Plus, as an added bonus, we've included an in-depth guide to successfully growing fruit trees in your yard. To get access to this information, it's free by the way, just go to urbanorchard.org or text FRUIT to 33444. That's urbanorchard.org or text FRUIT to 33444. You're listening to the Urban Farm Podcast, your partner in the Grow Your Own Food revolution. Whether you've just been introduced to urban farming or you're a lifelong advocate, we're sure you'll leave feeling more informed, equipped, and empowered to dig deeper into the soil of your local food economy. With you every step of the way, here's your host, Greg Peterson. Today on the Urban Farm Podcast, we have Carrie Adisho to talk about her experience with buying and eating locally grown foods. Carrie is a wife, mother, certified Dr. Sears health coach, local food advocate, and lover of food growing. She spends her time visiting various farms and gardens in and around Phoenix and connecting consumers directly to local growers. She organizes three meetup groups, Your Farm Foods, Arizona Natural Food Group, and Food as Medicine. She also blogs at yourfarmfoods.com and has created an online open marketplace, friendingfarmers.com, that allows users to buy, sell, and share locally grown foods. Welcome to the show today, Carrie. Thanks, Greg. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be on the air and talking with you. Yay. So I shared a bit about you. Can you fill in the blanks and share more about the path you took? To get where you're at now. Absolutely. So, uh, growing up, I tend to. I, I used to be often sick. I would pass out randomly at times. Oh my god. So gosh. It, yeah, it was random and uh, kind of nerve wracking for my parents at times. Mm-hmm. At about the age of 20, I got put on a nutritional path from a, a chiropractic nutritionist, and within months, I could feel the difference, and I stopped passing out since. So that led me on to a path of eating healthy and wow. learning more about food. All right, all right, hold on. So yeah. you changed your diet and you stopped passing out? Yes. It was that simple? Yep. It was that simple. Wow. And I, I, I mean, I could feel a difference within a week, but I didn't really completely believe the difference until months later when when uh, I just felt so much stronger. My My brain fog was lifted. I was able to think clearly. And my overall mood was better as well. So, but the, and, and then the passing out hasn't happened since. So that was what really convinced me that this, you know, like after a year of not passing out, I was just like, wow, this has really been a huge difference in my life. Yeah. And it, it made me want to share it with others. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. There's the push behind it. I, you know, when I was younger, yeah. this was in the, 70s and 80s, I, I had severe gastrointestinal problems. So sometimes in the morning, yeah. I would get up and be doubled over and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't wow. get up. And the interest, you know, they had me to doctors and they were doing all kinds right. of tests on me and they couldn't figure out what was happening. And it kind of subsided. And in 1991, I stopped eating red meat for yeah. pretty much because I found out that a lot of our red meat comes from South America where they're taking down, um, you know, taking down forests to grow this red meat. And right. wouldn't you know what the stomach problems went away. So the curious thing for me was that, you know, in the 70s and 80s, the doctors never bothered to ask me what I was eating. Right. And it sounds to me like you had the same experience. Yeah. And, and my experience when I started eating healthy was in... 2002. Uh huh. So, I mean, this is so I, as a child, I did have stomach pain. So, from the 80s, 90s, I did have stomach pains, but it didn't become severe. The, the passing out became more and more frequently 
up until I was about 19, 20. And at one point, I actually passed out at a doctor's office and stopped breathing. Oh, my and God. That's, yeah, and that's <laughs> when. <laughs> and my mom was there. And that's when we're like, okay, we, we better finally figure out what, what is yeah. going on. Yeah. So, wow. uh, yeah. So that was interesting. You know, fast forward, that was what, 10 years ago, more, <laughs> I'm a little bit behind. So 14 years ago. Uh-huh. And as my, as I journeyed these last 14 years of eating healthy, I tried all different sorts of things. And I even, you know, I have a sweet tooth, honestly. So I, I test <laughs> my limits. I, I'm like, what if I have one scoop of ice cream? Is my stomach going to hurt from that? Yeah. You know, and I and I test my limits and I see what I could do. And I really can't even do a full scoop of ice cream. Yeah. But I kept le- learning about ways to eat healthy. And obviously the main, the main source of food, vegetables and fruits, um, and then some meats on the side are uh-huh. are what drives a person and, and brings nutrients into a person. But the problem that I was finding was even though I was eating fairly healthy, I still needed a bunch of vitamins and supplements. Mm. And, I, and I kept asking why, Kim, to find out that it's because our food that we're eating yeah. lacks in nutrition. So I read somewhere that an apple in 1950 had about 4.18, 4.18 milligrams of iron, whereas in 1999 it had somewhere like 0.16 oh my milligrams gosh. of iron. Wow. Yeah, and so if you're thinking about the the amount of nutrients that we got from our food years ago mm-hmm. compared to what we're getting now, of course we're going to need vitamins and supplements. Absolutely. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, by the time we eat a green bean at the grocery store, it's been on the shelf or it's been in process of getting to the grocery store shelf for about seven days. Uh, eggs are about 30 days. So by the time we get to the food, you have to think that once it's once it's pulled from its vine or its tree or its bush, that's when it starts, the nutrient starts going down. Mm -hmm. So the first day might not be a big deal. The second day might not be a big deal. By the time we get it a week later, it, you know, it's lost anywhere from 20 to 60% of its nutrients on average. Wow. So then I started saying, okay, well, what about eating local? I have a friend that I was living here in, in Arizona from, um, 2006 to 2011 Mm -hmm. and around 2010 a friend of mine was like hey carrie you got to try this great local restaurant so i went with her and we tried it and the taste was immaculate i mean i was already eating healthy at this time Uh but i mean you could you could totally taste the the deliciousness in spinach when i didn't even like spinach at that time (laughs) or or like the tomatoes. I've never liked tomatoes, but when you eat them fresh and local, they have a whole different flavor to them. Yeah. So that was the start of my kick. And uh, we went to Joe's Farm Grill in Gilbert, and that, that was the start of my health kick. That We mm. moved back to Michigan. I'm sorry, my local kick. Uh, we moved back to Michigan from 2011 to 2015. Mm-hmm. And there are 52,000 family farms in Michigan. Wow. And as a... As a new consumer of local foods over there, it was extremely difficult to find local food. And then, so I, I, I was thinking, man, there, there's got to be an easier way. So when we moved back to Arizona, I was extremely excited because I was like, well, it's going to be easy to find local food. But <laughs> again, it's not, it, it, it's definitely not too difficult, but it's it's not very easy and convenient. I mean, if if local food was a little bit more convenient. It doesn't even have to be as convenient as a grocery store. It would be enough reason for much more people to buy local. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I started saying, you know what, let's see if there's other people in the area that, that want to buy from local foods that want to buy from small family farms or backyard farmers or Uh whoever may be growing locally. So I started a meetup group about a year ago called your farm foods. Now we've reached about 400 members, a little bit more than 400 members. And we visit a backyard grower or a small family farm about once a month. We nice. learn how. Yeah, yeah, it's tons of fun. We've seen so many cool things. I mean, I, I've seen a eucalyptus rainbow tree growing in a backyard. And then and then a small family farm that supplies food to people throughout the whole valley. Mm. So it's been a really wonderful journey. I've met great and interesting people. <laughs> and the the amount of love that it takes for people to put into growing Mm. their own food is amazing yeah 
Um, and then the amount of people that are interested in buying local and interested in growing their own food is equally amazing. Yeah, it's really exploding. So, That's cool. Yeah. So when you discovered this, this uh, chiropractor said, you know, you maybe should change your diet. When you went there, how did you change your diet? What did you do to make such a big difference for you? Well, I, I should tell you. I was kind of forced to go to him. I was living with my aunt in San Diego at the time. Mm -hmm. And she she was like, you need to go to him because it was the second time I passed out with her. And I was like, I was completely, at, in my personal view, I was thinking, nope, it's not going to work. I've tried, mm. I've tried all sorts of other doctors. I'll just go because I'm living with her rent free. <laughs> I don't want to mess this up. Yeah. So, uh, so I went and he told me I need to not eat any sugars including breads mm. um I, I actually didn't even eat fruit for a few days and then eventually started reintroduced fruit back into my diet right and he put me on all sorts of vitamins i was lacking in vitamin e vitamin c vitamin b12 he put me on those vitamins for that time being and he actually gave me some cod liver oil um oh, suggested that fun, i take huh? that right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what <laughs> It doesn't taste great, but I'd so much rather take a scoop of that than faint randomly right. <laughs> at yeah. any given time. Yeah. So I did all the things that he said, and he warned me. He said, by you not eating sugar, you're going to be extremely tired. And right. I literally slept for three days. Yeah. I mean, I woke up, I ate, I went back to sleep for three days. Yeah. And then when I, after those three days, it just felt much better and then after a week even more better and then then I started working out again and my brain was functioning normally uh so it was it was really eye opening uh it was it was basically eating greens uh -huh. and and clean meats so no red meats mm -hmm. no no pork at that time and um uh so it was chickens fish and greens and a ton of greens and then a little bit of fruit so hmm, interesting. Um, well, yeah. there, there, there's a book that I read years ago called Sugar Blues by William Duffy. Uh, oh, I haven't read that one. Yeah, well, it's a it's a older one, and it talks about you know withdrawal. Basically, what you were doing is going through a withdrawal from oh yeah, you know, from a sugar high that we're on constantly. Right. I I even I even sweat. I, I was even sweating at the time, and and I did have shakes off and on. So it was it was truly withdrawals, and I didn't learn about sugar withdrawal symptoms until years later mm. yeah what is eating a healthy diet to you what's that look like and and this could the question could also be what is real food yeah so eating a healthy diet is eating anything eating what you could find closest to grown so mm. that could and and the majority should be plant-based with a little bit of meats. Mm -hmm. So so something like a huge salad, side of stir fried uh, like broccoli, carrots, uh, cauliflower, celery with a with a small maybe card size side of side of meat, mm -hmm. side of chicken or fish. And it really should be the closest thing to grown locally closest thing to so the least processed so when we start talking about veggies lots of kids are like oh there oh, <laughs> there's veggie chips these are so healthy because they're veggie chips yeah but <laughs> but the veggie chips are so highly processed that by the time you're eating them you're probably not getting much vegetable out of it right so yeah so if you want something veggie chips um take kale uh put a little bit of oil on it a little bit of salt put it on a pan throw it in the oven you know, 375, 400, watch it. Once it starts getting crispy, that's it. You oh, got kale chips. You got kale, and, yeah. and yeah, and you know, my kids love them and they're young. So I'm, for if my kids love them, many other kids would love them too. Yeah. And so you really want the closest thing to, to grown. Um, and when we start talking about food, every, every few miles that the food's away from where it's grown, if, if it, the majority of your food is being shipped about right. uh, what 500 to 1,200 miles to get to us, uh, sometimes more when it comes from out of the country. Right. Yeah. And we know that that process is that 
oftentimes it's picked before it's ripened. Yep. It gets to where it's going. It gets to a warehouse close to where it's going, bombarded with a ripening agent, and then put in the grocery store. By the time it gets to us, it's been you know, anywhere from three to 10, maybe 30 days, depending on what it is. Right. And uh, when we're picking it, it's still leaking the chemicals off of it mm-hmm. that had that have been sprayed on it while it was growing and sprayed on it after it's been grown. And so we're really not getting uh, the best quality of foods that we could get at the grocery stores. So when we when I think about healthy, I think about coming from my backyard or the person down the street's backyard or the small family farm that's growing you know, there's plenty of them here in the Valley that are doing such wonderful job of growing healthy foods and local and fresh where we could eat them within a day or two of being picked. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's what I consider healthy. Even if you get a food from a farm on a Saturday at the farmer's market and it sits in your refrigerator for for five days, it's really sitting in there less. It's really still um, sitting less. It's still fresher than if you get a food from the grocery store and eat it that same day. Yeah. So, so when, when I think about healthy, I think about eat as much as you want, as long as it's the right foods. You're, if you're eating plant fruits, vegetables, and meats, your body will tell you when you've had enough of it. Mm. But when you're eating processed foods, your body doesn't <laughs> know <laughs> because oh. it, they, they've literally, there's chemicals in there to yes. make it addictive. Yes. Yeah, and so so then we we end up just overeating. Right. And and I've been guilty of this also. Oh, I, mean, I have too. Yeah, so so it's not easy, but it's it truly the feeling the the way that a person feels after they eat healthy, it's so hard to go back to yeah. eating junk food. Yeah. Because you know what it feels like to feel good. Right. And once you do, you don't want to go back. Yeah. I, so in August, I had a conversation with a medical doctor and I chose and I'm doing an experiment in my life right now. We're about 100 days in of eating a plant based diet. And interestingly enough, the easy thing to give up was poultry because that was really the only thing I was eating. And now when I look at eating chicken, it's like, yeah, not interested. Yeah, not interested. So it's it's shifted for me. Um, right. And the other th- the other curious thing for me about it is I'm never hungry. Right. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. And and you know, I'd like to touch on, you know, I talk about eating meat, uh, eating uh, poultry or fish, mm-hmm. or and, and some people beef. I know for me, uh, and you said so also that that beef upsets your stomach, so I avoid it as best as can. Yeah. But, but, it, that's not true for everybody, you right. know. And and the thing is, when you're eating real foods, your body will tell you. Mm. what you should be eating and what you shouldn't be eating. And for each person, it's going to be, in, it's going to be different. Yeah. And so, but when you're eating processed foods, you, there's, you can't really decipher between the difference. Right. But however, on real foods, if you're eating poultry and your body doesn't really want it and it's not reacting well to it, you'll notice the difference. I encourage everybody to keep a food journal. And the oh, food right. journal is a great way, I mean, to tell you could write down what you've eaten and have you, how you have felt throughout the day. And there may be some times that you'll eat something and three hours later or four hours later, you'll feel a certain way. Right. But once you keep, when you keep that journal, you'll be able to see the pattern eventually and know what the offending food is. It's really all about the, the, the real food, eating locally grown foods that are close to home. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. When, and you know, to that point, interestingly, in 2011, I was at seed school down in Tucson. It was a week long oh, residential yeah. program on keeping seeds with Bill, B- Bill McDormand and Bell Starr. And nice. while I was there, it actually happened on June 21st, 2011 in the USA Today. There was an article that came out and claimed that according to the FD, Food and Drug Administration, two thirds of our fruits and vegetables come from outside of the US. Yeah. Most of which we can grow in our own fronts and backyards. Right, absolutely. Yeah, and that's that's really what you're addressing is how can we get more people growing those kinds of things, uh, you know, in our neighborhoods. Right. I mean, when you think about getting our food shipped in, you think, well, it's convenient, it's really okay, it's it's not that big of a deal. But then you also think about us shipping out our food. And the thing is, uh, when we 
eat local food, it not only affects our own personal health, but it also affects the environment because since the foods are local, they'll need less chemicals yeah. and so it'll improve the environment. And then it also improves the the treatment of animals. So if you if you do choose to to eat meats and, and poultry, when you're buying it from the store, you're buying factory farmed foods. Mm. Even the organic ones are still factory farmed. They're yeah. they're a little bit better than, than the non factory farmed, but they're still factory farmed and the animals are treated extremely cruel. If you think about the way that a person that is abused and treated cruel tends to have malnutrition and mm. tends to have health issues. Yeah. And it's the same exact thing with animals. So if we are eating local, we tend to get from smaller uh, farms and right. they are not, they, I mean, I've met some farmers that have literally cried uh, when they, mm. when they go to process their, their animals and, mm. you know, and it doesn't yeah. feel good to them, but, but they, that's the business that they signed up for. And so, so they, they move on and they do what they got to do to get over it, but they really do love their animals. Take it to heart, yeah. Um, yeah, there was a, when I was living in Michigan, uh, there was, we, me and my husband went to a factory farm, a factory dairy farm that had an open day at the farm. We, you know, they talked about giving the, having to give the cows antibiotics, um, having to separate the calf from the mothers within an hour of birth. As we walked around, we saw that the calves were sad. I mean, it was bluntly obvious, and and the cows didn't seem too, too happy either, um, being crammed in the little spots that they had. Yeah. So we ended up not. They had a breakfast on the farm at that farm. We ended up not eating there because we just felt so uncomfortable that we we left. We got breakfast somewhere else, and then we went to a local farmers market that ended up uh, going on while we were leaving. And I saw a dairy farmer there, and she had a small herd uh, I think it was just about 10 or 15 and I asked her well what do you do when they get sick Uh, because she said uh, they they don't feed them antibiotics where earlier that day earlier that day the factory farm said all animals gotta get antibiotics because all animals get sick just like humans get sick Mm. so then I hear this small farmer say oh well we don't (laughs) give them antibiotics and I say well what do you what do you do when they get sick though don't they get sick and she said, no, they don't get sick because they're out grazing. And if they do get a little bit of something, they're able, they're, they're living a healthy life. So they're able to just Fight it off. Uh, get over it the way yeah. our, their bodies just handle it naturally, the ways that human bodies will handle a disease naturally if, if they're uh, healthy. Yeah. So I found that pretty amazing and that the way that they care for their animals was so completely natural. Right. Um, yeah. The, the difference. So, Carrie, you seem to get a lot of things done in the world, uh, organizing meetup groups, your blog, yeah, your new marketplace that's coming online. Uh, tell me about what it takes to get stuff done in your life. Well, uh, there, there's quite a few things. One is organization. Mm-hmm. Um, or Being organized really helps me stay focused. But even more than that, it's really the ability to work with other people so for example the meetup group uh, one of them food as medicine is co-organized the blog there's been people who have helped with the blogs in various ways such as content and information and allowing me to visit their locations Mm -hmm. so it really getting things done it's really about motivation organization and working with other people I, I find it very delightful uh-huh. When I meet other people who are, yeah, uh, who, who love to grow their own food, or who love to share, or, or who love to share their food, and who love to um, yeah. buy locally, it's really encouraging. Yeah, and I and I contend, I, I we know each other from uh, some, yeah. you know, some we've met before, and I contend a big part of the reason you get stuff done is because you say it's going to get done, and then you go do it, and I want to congratulate you for that. That is, uh, thank you. Yeah, that is huge. Thank that you. That is huge. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations. So let's just talk briefly about friendingfarmers.com and your concept behind there. It's still in process. Uh, yep. Tell us about that and what's your idea there and intent? Oh, well, friendingfarmers.com is a, is a platform that allows, is an online marketplace platform that allows consumers to communicate directly with farmers. Mm-hmm. So that way, 
um, it will be easy and convenient for us to get food from local farmers uh, and for farmers to find consumers to sell to. My hope in doing this is, one, to get more consumers to buy local, uh-huh. and then two, to increase the amount of the to increase the quantity of food that the farmers are growing. Mm. I mean, not so they get so large that they're factory farmed or anything, but just so they're stable enough to make it a full-time business so they could give it care and quality and we could get more people growing food and it could be kind of a dominoes effect where Mm. we have so many. There's In my one to two square mile radius of my home, Uh there's two egg sellers and two other gardeners that I know of. Wow. And that's without me looking. Right. And I live in a regular suburban area. So I could just imagine uh, all of the people that grow that could supply right to our own neighborhoods. We would be able to, to... get all of our food literally within walking distance of our house. Yeah. And so um, it would cut down on on uh, pollution. It mm-hmm. would increase our – it would better our local economy. Yeah. It, and it would help our um, our overall health and, and, again, animal welfare as well. Yeah. Excellent. So, yeah, the overall goal is to simply connect consumers directly to farmers. Let them communicate with each other. Uh-huh. Good. Yeah. So when people can go to your farmfoods.com and sign up for your email list and they'll get information as this develops, yes? Uh, yes, absolutely. So your your... farmfoods.com and that is the blog. They could sign up right there and I'd be happy I'll be emailing information out as we get it. You could even email me directly, Carrie at your farmfoods.com uh, to ask me any questions, comments, suggestions. Or just to chat about local food and just food in general. It's kind of my thing. Yeah, perfect. So that's that's K-E-R-R-Y. Yes. All right, cool. So can you talk about a time you failed, how you overcame that failure, and what you might have learned from it? You know what? That is a wonderful question. It's something I don't like to talk about very much. But um, there, when my husband and I first got married in 2006, we were newlyweds. We were young. We were pretty stupid. Uh, we went out and we bought a house right away that we didn't need, but we, we said, Hey, we're newlyweds. You got to buy a house. Mm -hmm. So we bought a house and eventually the market crashed. Uh, the, not eventually, actually quite quickly, the market went down. Uh, my husband lost his job. I was uh, only working part time. So we eventually lost that house Mm -hmm. and it, it was heartbreaking to both of us because both of us were expecting to stay in there a lot, uh, a lifetime yeah. we were expecting to raise a family in it so it was extremely heartbreaking but it really i mean it really changed my whole opinion about life and the and what's important mm. so at that time in my life i was thinking material things were important such as houses and cars and mm-hmm. and my clothing um well that forced me to look at what truly is important in life and um it's really health and happiness and and you could find that with whatever wherever you go with whatever you do and with whatever kind of clothes uh or home that you live in yeah so um so it forced us to look at our way of life and change our habits uh with those habits came ways i could eat healthy but on a budget and with that came local foods so really it um, it was a failure, mm-hmm. but but I feel like we came out of it better people than we were when we when we got there. Those are so. the best kind of failures to have. Yeah. Basically, when you take you know you take those lemons and you do your best to make the best lemonade you can out of it. Right, yeah. and, and you know I I think it took a lot of guidance from other people, family and friends that mm-hmm. really helped us show us the way of like, hey, that doesn't mean anything really that just means you lost a house it's just a materialistic thing yeah you know and it was it was actually uh turned out really well yeah i find for me that being grateful for what i get to do every day it just it just seeds the future with just such great um you know, great fruits, pun intended, right. all the way through, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I find myself being yeah, grateful absolutely. for this, you know, this great stuff that I get to deliver to people every day. So 
Yay. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you consider your biggest success? You know, that's another great, wonderful question. I, I think I have a couple, and I don't know which one's greater than the other. So I really feel that Your Farm Foods is as a meetup group and uh-huh. uh, is doing really well. Mm-hmm. I love that there's 400 people in it. I think um, it's a great success. Yeah. I, 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 but the thing about it is I don't really consider it my success because there's 400 people in there. So without those 400 people, it wouldn't be successful. Yeah. But I, I do think it's a great thing that I started as far as – you know, carrying it on to 400 people, that, that takes a bunch of people, not just one. So, so that's a big thing. And then in my life, um, I homeschool my kids. Oh, nice. And when I, yeah, thank you. And when I first started, I was like, I don't know if I could do this. This might yeah. not be the thing for me. I was like, I'll give it a try for six months. Um, we, we were moving from Michigan to Arizona and we knew we would move again into a different district after we got to Arizona. So I didn't want to put my kids in a, in a school and take them out again and make them new. They'd have to find new friends again within six months. Right. So I said, let me try homeschooling. The worst is in six months, I'll put them in, in a regular school. Yeah. But, you know, when you hear your, your four-year-old start reading or your, your seven-year-old start doing multiplication and division and asking about fractions and, and <laughs> curious about every way of life, yeah. you know, it, it makes it, it feels successful. So I can't say, I mean, they're so young still that I can't say I'm successful at it, but I think for right now we're doing a pretty good job. Nice. So what, what drives you? Oh, you know, there's never one thing, but just like we were talking about earlier, once I started eating healthy and started feeling good again, I wanted to share that with other people. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really what it boils down to is that I feel like every single person should know how it feels to eat healthy so that way they could know what it feels like to to be their their best self Mm -hmm. but then they still have a choice whether they want to or not i mean there are those days that i do choose the ice cream (laughs) (laughs) but our health in our american society is is depleting quickly we're bearing more children than ever before in the history of 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 life and so and it's only expected to get worse there's more parents bearing their children now than ever before right and and I hate to see that. And it really hurts thinking, hey, you know, you could try to eat healthier and see if that makes a difference. And there's no guarantees, of course, mm-hmm. but there's really nothing wrong with trying. And I could guess that the outcome would be better than if we continue eating the way that we eat now. Yeah. So, yeah. so so that drives me. Hoping, uh, trying to give our, our children a better future um, of, of life really drives me creating a community within our our own cities and our own our own neighborhoods mm-hmm. really drives me to to better our overall system. Nice. Yeah. So, I'm all about education. I have to know is there a book that's been influential for you in this process in your life? Okay, well, there's been a few different books. So, but okay, so I've read things like the gut and psychology syndrome, the family nutrition book by Dr. Sears, mm. Brain Maker and Grain Brain. And then there's books like uh, Five Languages of Love, which isn't about health, but it's about personal relationships. And then um, 168 Hours, which is about time management. Oh, right. Those are all, yeah, those are all great books. And a bunch of, I love self help books. They're, they're great for learning and, and bettering ourselves, which better society. But my overall most favorite, and it's a, a little bit embarrassing, is is actually a movie more well known as the movie as Doctor Sears. I'm sorry, Doctor Seuss's uh, The Low Racks. So have you seen that movie, oh, Doctor yes. Seuss's The Low Racks? The Low yeah. Racks. Yes. So yeah. So I was watching it with my kids years ago, and. And we were watching it, and I was like, oh, my goodness, this is our life today. So the, the plot of the movie is about bottling air and selling air and how people were going along with it for the most part until uh-huh. one boy discovered that there was a different way. <laughs> and um, it's interesting to think that a necessity that everybody needs to survive would be bottled up, cor- incorporated, and sold. Yeah. But in but that is what happens on a daily basis if you we think about the way that food is. 
food is a necessity that everybody needs. Mm-hmm. It, it makes we function with it. We cannot function without it. But yet it is uh, incorporated and packaged and sold and very lim- and we have very limited um, access to yeah. to what is really out there. So, uh, like, like for example, uh, we, me, and my husband went and saw the movie Seed Up that I know you and oh, yes. um, and Maya Daly helped put on yep. over here at uh, at the theaters. So, when we were watching it, I was just amazed to think that there was a hundred and something different kinds varieties of artichokes, and yet we only have two now. Two. Right, They're, exactly. We're down to two. Mm-hmm. And, and that just shows you how limited our food is when we continue to um, buy incorporated uh, it, it from from grocery stores yeah. incorporated. Yeah, wow. so the Lorax is all about, I, I think it's a wonderful kid movie that simplifies actual life. <laughs> right, by Dr. Zeus. Yeah. Cool. So what one final piece of advice do you have for our listeners? Well, it would have to be follow your instincts. So it sounds simple, kind of cliche, mm-hmm. but it truly, I mean, there's, there were years of my life that I, I just um, ignored what I thought I should do and would go by what other people told me to do. Mm-hmm. And that has since changed. But it's amazing when you start taking control of your own life and you start doing what feels good to you and not not intruding on other people's, you know, boundaries. But when you start doing what, what you believe that you're being called to do, a whole bunch of doors just open up and, and you just follow it. So, um, I would say the most important thing is to follow your instincts, follow your gut. If you have an idea, if you have something eating at you, figure out what it is and, and follow it to the end. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show and sharing your experience with us today, Carrie. It has been a treat getting to chat with you. Thank you very much for having me, Craig. Absolutely. So how can our listeners get a hold of you? Farm Foods is on Instagram, Twitter, Mm -hmm. and Facebook. Uh, They could also email me at Carrie, K-E-R-R-Y, at yourfarmfoods.com. And, of course, visit our blog, yourfarmfoods.com. Perfect. Perfect. You can also find show notes from today's podcast at urbanfarm.org backslash your farm foods. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us on the Urban Farm Podcast. My favorite plant to grow in my yard is the fruit tree because you plant it once and you get fruit for decades. If you have ever been curious on the best ways to be successful in growing fruit trees, today is your lucky day. Why? Because my team and I have compiled our best interviews and videos in one place to assist you in growing your own toe-tingling peaches and awesome apples right out your front or back door. Plus, as an added bonus, we've included an in-depth guide to successfully growing fruit trees in your yard. To get access to this information, it's free by the way, just go to urbanorchard.org or text FRUIT to 33444. That's urbanorchard.org or text FRUIT to 33444. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Urban Farm Podcast. Remember to listen three days a week for tips, advice, and resources to help you on your journey with urban farming. You can find us on the web at urbanfarm.org or send us an email to podcast at urbanfarm.org. In the words of Vincent Van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Be encouraged that with each lesson learned and skill developed, you are one step closer in the direction of your dreams.